All right, I want to welcome everyone to the Kayak Fish and Raw podcast, and we have a treat today. We have Stan Hunt, owner of Rebound Sport Fishing Charters. Oh, and you got it we right. Have, and we have, I got that right. You 30 like that? times, he's like, what's the name of the boat again? <laughs> oh, <No>. shut up. <laughs> so we got Freddie here. What's up? And uh, you look a little more awake and alive from Africa. I was so tired, dude, for like three weeks. You looked like shit. Oh, bro, I was, it was, it's tough traveling across the world and then like not stopping and then traveling back across the world and right. not stopping again. Well, in case you missed that episode, I'm you good. can check out our Extreme Kayak Fishing TV and watch our episode about Freddie going to Africa. And, and Stan, we are super excited. Yeah, man. And I, I was telling him, I wanted to get you on the show for a while. I think we were talking for a yeah. little while on, on Actually, Facebook. Yeah, we were. Yeah, so uh, you're here. I'm and here, man. I'm excited, man. And I know you got some stories. And uh, I want to dive right into... How you started with everything, you know, how the fishing, the charters, uh, you fished Jamie Bunn's tournaments. That was another guest we just recently had on, and uh, you won quite a bit, my friend. Yeah, you know, won a lot in Jamie's tournaments. I mean, everybody fishes Jamie's tournaments. I mean, they're right. unreal tournaments and money and just awesome. trophies and just everything, you know, even the life around the tournaments mm. and sure. the parties he puts on. I mean, Jamie Bunn's tournaments are the best out there it's yeah. a lifestyle for too sure. yeah, i man, feel for like sure but uh before that i mean it really it came from you know my dad actually started way back in the day out my grandpa my great grandpa fished too my grandpa had a boat in 1937 uh, out of miami so i uh, started charter fishing there and my dad uh got old enough and came over with his brother stan hunt my uncle stan hunt uh so they started fishing pompano i believe it was 1963 wow so uh yeah had a boat out of hillsborough right there in the inlet uh since 63 and um that's a family you know, affair yeah yep yeah. and uh the whole like wahoo legend with me and stuff actually came from my dad you know and really and my brother casey and my older brother chip uh, they would fish a lot of tournaments, the Wahoo, the old Wahoo Championship tournaments in like the Bahamas. The real, the real ones. Yeah, for you <laughs> know, and they went on for years over there, the BBCs and stuff, and they would have the Wahoo legs. And um, actually, eight years in a row, they were national champs in the Bahamas. Wow. Eight years in a row. I mean, nobody could touch them. You That's know? And, pretty yeah. insane, man. Oh, yeah, and I mean, they fished against guys and with guys like Ronnie Chapman, you know, and. And there was a few of the guys back then, you know, not as many great fishermen, just there wasn't as many fishermen back mm, then, sure. you know. And of course, now there's just thousands of people and, man, there's so many better fishermen out there these days. You yeah. Know, so. And I think it's always evolving, too. It is, you know, so much. Yeah. I mean, I think like like you, for instance, as an angler have evolved differently than, let's say, your grandfather and then your father and all that. Oh, so yeah. everyone's kind of got their own niche and you created a niche definitely right. here in Pompano and Lauderdale pretty much all over. And, uh, you know, especially with Jamie's tournaments, I remember Lance with Team Young Guns talking about you guys, you know, how you guys are just elite, you know, yeah, awesome you know, fishermen. That's, that's the way it was for years and years, you know, right. and it, it kind of took off and everybody kind of found out what we were doing and how far we were running to catch the fish we did in all the meat tournaments, right. you know. And, sure. And then, of course, the bait thing, too, you know, nobody had any idea we were fishing all the big baits and big speedos and big bullets and giant blue runners you know so everybody started catching on to that too and so you guys literally took that notion that you know the bigger the bait the bigger the fish and you used much, it in the yeah. tournament you know, setting up there in jupiter we'd be fishing right next to five ten fifteen of the boats you know up there and they'd have tournaments going on out of jupiter too so there'd be another right. 200 boats around us or 300 and i mean it was literally we were hiding our baits dropping them in the water <laughs> next to the boats so the boats couldn't see them you know and just you get 40 50 pounders on and these guys are catching bonitas and like 10 and 15 pounders and they're like oh my god what are you guys uh, doing you can weed out those bonita bonitas by getting the just size much of the bait. bigger baits right a lot of times yeah you know but up wow. there in jupiter there are some giant some bonitas, beast -ass bonitas yeah, right? and they actually yeah. eat your giant blue runners and big speedos and everything up there wow but, that's crazy. Yeah. and when, when you first started like what got you into doing the tournaments itself was it just from the family like who was your mentor when yeah, basically from my family. I mean, I was a little too young to fish with my dad so much, but uh, basically my brother Casey growing up, you know, and Chip. Um, I fished maybe a little bit more with Casey, um, and he kind of raised me into it more. But right. Chip was always there too. I was, you know, doing other things, fishing with Chip, sword fishing more with Chip, and but tournaments and all the other sure. things with Casey. So, I mean, and then I fished with all 
really good guys too growing up. I had the pleasure to fish with guys like Eddie Wheeler and Jimmy David was wow. one of my mentors too. I used to go to Jimmy David's house and hang Joe's out with pretending him, like over. he knows those people. Right no, now. I yeah, know, right? I know some of them. Oh, I do. Yeah, I know. Him, but right? it's I don't know that's them, so but I hear of them. Yeah, I hear Wheeler, them. Right? That's Ooh. right, Freddie. <laughs> uh, and then with the sword fishing, because mm-hmm. that I didn't even know. You know, when you got into that, like, what was that like for you? Especially man. as a young, young I man. I was probably the first time, actually, I went with Casey Hunt and Eddie Wheeler and Lewis Krauss when he was back and alive. A lot of people know who I'm talking about, but, yeah. you know, just a I group know of guys, like, legends now, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think I was, like, 10 years old or 11 years old. And the first night we went, we went and caught, like, two or three fish, like, 200, like, a 250, Shh, you know. Man. And, like, they were all nice fish back then. And that yeah, was just rod night. and reels, you know. First time ever. You know, I got a story yeah, for you, awesome. a quick story. When I when I first went sword fishing, I, I was new to Florida. And I went with um, with Chad, uh, what was his last name? Do you know a guy, Chad, that used to go all the time? He was a commercial sword fisherman for a little while. Young guy, Peters? kind of our age. I think so. He had blonde hair. Oh, and, okay, Chad, uh... Berkeley, maybe? Berkeley, Berkeley, yes. Yeah. Hey, Chad. Yeah. So That's I went out with joke. Chad, and uh, he took me out, and we went, you know, probably about 20 miles or whatnot, and I've never done it before. I fished in New Jersey going to the canyons and stuff, so it kind of reminded me of doing that a little bit. Right. You got seasick? You know, head, yeah, right. And heading <laughs> out. Ask. My name's not Fred York. He's not going to tell you anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. Been my life. So we, we head out there, and let me tell you something. That first sword that we got, and he's like screaming at me to get it up because he's we're pulling him with the uh, with the off the buoys, you know what I mean, uh-huh. with the ropes. And he's pulling that thing up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that thing worked. That's because you don't know what buttons are. That's truly like amazing. How long does it last? Sword, Ten man. minutes? Jesus. Mm-hmm. I put that up for the show because I thought it looked cool. And I don't know about the red and white though. Uh, yeah, really. there's a little girl, red's about yeah. a little bad luck for me really is it? why well, I mean, there's i mean there's stories of that too. Uh, there's stories we got a lot of stories yeah. to go over today <laughs> See, I just threw but anyway up. long story short i'm up there and I'm, and he's pulling this thing up and he had me on the gaff and let me tell you something that when this fish was coming up first of all its eyeball was like this big and this thing was ginormous and he wanted me to gaff this thing and this is my first time this is the biggest fish to be totally honest with you that i've ever seen come up to the surface like width wise mm. that it was like a dinosaur literally and i gaffed this fish and that mother effer <laughs> ripped the gaff out of my hand went straight back down nice. he's screaming at me he's like, i'll throw you off the boat and i'm it's just like as you are yeah. you gotta hold on i'm like holy crap dude i don't know what the and i'm like this is my first time so i get another gaff he gets him back up we end up getting him in the boat and just to pull him in the boat it took three of us and I don't even know how much that fish weighed, to be honest, because he, you know, he's commercial, so he's just loading them up and then, you know, instantly cutting the the bill off and all that. Uh-huh. But he let me saw the bill off that one, and it was definitely an experience that I'll never forget. But those fish are monstrous, man. They are. Some of them are. And, and I mean, what's the biggest one you've ever got? Uh, we caught one at nighttime on rod and reel that was close, right at six hundred pounds. Oh my and man. back in the day, that was like huge. Like you know, there weren't. Any really caught back 600 then. pounds, but yeah, and rod the week and reel. Before that, my brother Casey caught one, and it was the same. I think it was a hundred and hundred and thirty six inches. Uh, yeah, 136. I think it was short length, and my fish was the same, but his fish was like 50, 60, 70 pounds bigger, you know, just fatter. Fat, you could see yeah, they belly. get fat, man. Yeah. Dang. Yep. So wow. it was real cool, but that actually like turned me off. I was fishing like every night. I'm like, I'm gonna catch one bigger than my brother, you know. And and we wow. we caught one pretty dang close. And then actually like two weeks after that, my brother Chip goes out and catches one like 500. So we all got one that same month, you know. I mean, really crazy. big. Let me wait, 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 wait a second. Like that's like <laughs> a thousand pounds of food. It's oh, wait, that's like fifteen hundred pounds of food. I got that's I gotta ask you though, six hundred pounds, right? Like I'm just comprehending this right let's like me and you are out there right and we have a 600 pound swordfish rod and reel yeah how many people do you have on the boat to get this thing how did you even store it yeah that was actually a pretty funny story too. <laughs> see i figured <laughs> because uh we we hooked the fish straight underneath the boat about 100 feet down mm. the great part was at night, at only, night. the great okay, part is okay. it's only 100 feet down <laughs> yeah so it's Actually, it was um, Matt White back then was just starting to fish. Matt White and Nikki White. I don't know if you know the Whites, no. but they have the both OCD. They fish oh, yeah, all the okay, OCD. Stuff. Yep. Right, so uh, 
it was his first night coming with me sword fishing, but he fished with Cliff Maddock like 30 times. And they had, he told me the story, you know, we had so many bites, we had so many fish on, I can't catch one, I haven't got one in the boat, you know, and the first night he comes with me, you know, it's luck, whatever it was. Right. But we catch that big fish, you know, he's close to 600, we caught another one about 100 pounds. But uh, so we get the bite straight down about 100 feet. You know, and uh, the fish comes straight up jumping, going crazy. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's jumping. a three, 400-pounder. You know, it's big fish. Mind you, we had it on a 9 old Senator pen reel. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it was pretty scary. But uh, he went down. He fought for a while, you know, deeper. He coming up. He jumped again. The last three hours of the fight, we could just see the glow stick under the boat. So he's probably down 80, 90 feet, right. something like that. I don't know if there was a thermocline or whatever in the water, but he, we just couldn't budge the fish up anymore. You know, we'd get him 10 foot up and he'd go back down 20 foot. And, and he just, kept getting air, so he's yeah, getting he was strong just again. There, you know, he's strong, just taking us north. And um, But anyways, Nikki White, she fought the fish first three and a half hours or something. Uh, our rod butt or our fighting belt was a flip-flop from nice. J.P. White. Nice, that's, like, that's my yeah. style. So it was uh, <laughs> that's, Nikki that's White, style, J.P. Right White. And Matt White and myself. So there's four yeah. of us. There's four of you guys. Right. What, what size boat? There's a hole it in the flipper. It was the old 25 Ranger. Oh my god! You know, god. one of the one of the boats we used to fish on. They're <laughs> incredible boats. But yeah, but six hundred. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. No GPS, no depth finder, no compass on that boat. Back then, me and JP would just go, and I look back and see the buildings. You know, oh no, we need to go a little bit more. You know, the buildings get a little smaller. The buildings are, little are, buildings are like three quarters of an right inch. So we need to go a little yeah, further. That night was actually one of those nights, and it was pretty cool. But, That's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so we get the fish up, and same thing. It ripped the gaff out of one of their hands. I yeah, forget. they're strong. Man. Oh yeah, and we got them, and. Um, you know, it's just the power in that fish was just incredible. It's absurd. Yeah. The big yeah. fish. And how many, you just, you gaffed it a second time and you got them? Yeah, em? we put like three or four gaffs. You put three or four in Held okay. on for a while. And it took us, I mean, we put a rope over the T-top, you know, trying to hoist better. We had like <laughs> oh two ropes God. going up and we were pulling down. It took us like 45 to 50 minutes to get the fish uh, on the boat once crazy. we had them up. And, and you got them in the boat. Up. Yep. Yep. We have a couple pictures lurking around from then too, you know, with the wow. bill, like the head was like up on the side and the bill was just like straight up and it looked like it was like a 10 foot bill, you know, just it was so crazy. And Who kept the bill? Yep. We got it mounted. So it was on the Figured. original fish and we actually ended up giving the original mount to uh, Matt and JP's dad, Howard White. So oh, nice. he's got it in his house. But awesome. Yeah. It was just such the original mount that Great Tax Army did was just unbelievable on the fish. I mean, that's truly just amazing i mean there's no other word i can really think of to land these fish these dinosaurs monsters whatever you want to call them i mean they're just 600 pounds some dinosaurs are like really small though so well and you know what actually the most incredible night that same night after that we got done fishing we let our balloons go we, our balloons have glow sticks in them you know so you could see where the balloons are right you know and you kind of coordinate your baits and you can let them down however you want them, whatever. But we reeled up. We're leaving. We let our balloons go. So we had two or three balloons out there floating in the water. And we start hearing this, Psh, you know, like, Psh, like, like whale. whales. You know, yeah. like, well, that's cool. Let's yeah. go see what they are. We had a spotlight. We spotlighted, you know, our balloons and stuff. And we start seeing there was three killer whales actually playing with our balloons. Like just here. Killer touching whales? Them, hitting them, like throwing them in the air. I killer didn't know whales. They were out there. It was I incredible. Thought they were in like. Cold water. I don't even want to go fishing That's again. That's the cool thing about the <laughs> Gulf again. Stream. You know, Jesus. everything comes through there. Damn, All the man. great whites and stuff coming through lately. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's crazy this. stuff out there. Like I said, I've only done it twice, sword fishing with Chad. Mm -hmm. And I've, I saw stuff out there that it's was... That was I, he turned on his spotlights one night, and it was just quiet and dark, and we were just bored, you know? Mermaids mm -hmm. everywhere. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and there were, like, these... I forget the name of the... I think there were white sharks, he said they were. And they were nasty, man. White, I mean, white tip. Yeah, oceanic, I think the white. white yeah, yeah, and they were just, they were everywhere. Those all are the ones that the used to eat the sailors back in the day off the ships that would go down. Oh, man. The white, oceanic white tips. Hmm. They got legend. Sounds like fun. Yeah. So, if you're going to get eaten by something, bottom line, don't shark. fall out of your boat <laughs> oh, 20 miles offshore. I wouldn't want to do it, uh, period, right? But yeah. And then, uh, and now you're a seasoned tournament angler. You've been doing that for a long time. Right. And uh, you, you know, we were just talking about Jamie's tournaments, and I mean, you've won how many of these events? Um, we've, I mean, sailfish tournaments in general. 
uh, I've won a couple. Yeah. You know, and and placed in top fives and top tens yeah, that's a lot. Awesome. You know, so um, last year we took off from Jamie's and you know, I fished the Ocean Reef Cup. Well, I've been fishing the Ocean Reef Cup and the, right. the Ocean Reef tournaments. So the last two years in a row. So. And for people that don't know that the Ocean or the, the Cup one, explain that a little bit. The Ocean Reef Cup. So there's a four tournament series. And uh, the, the Ocean Reef Cup's the last one. Um, throughout the other tournaments, there's there's two tournaments. I think you can kite fish and meat fish also, and your points combine okay. with your sailfish. But it's a sailfish event. Right. Okay. Right. Gotcha. And the, the last one's called the Ocean Reef Cup, which is a pretty huge tournament. You know, um, I think there was 70 boats in it last year, nice. or 74, you know, and it's it's big name boats from all over the place. And what's know? the uh, payouts like in that? Well, last year was actually, I think, one of the biggest payouts in it in a long time because we had more boats, and uh, it was just under 60000 we won. So mm-hmm. it was a, yeah, it was a good. That's for winning. It was a good tournament. Yeah. Just 60, under 60000 yeah. Just under. Damn. It was like 58 or. What a shame. Give or take. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. But, you and know, with Jamie's, how much, have you, how, how much have you, how much have you, yeah, we've won Accumulated some, some better, Jamie's, you better pay. I don't even know what it is, really. Yeah, you know, it's you probably... just kind of, by the time you get done spending so much and going through it, you yeah. kind of And that's the thing rolling. I think a lot of people don't understand right. is, uh, and I learned this from Lance, you know, these guys that fish these these huge events, you know, they're, they're putting in not only, you know, costs in, into the boat itself and, the, and everything and the gear and every little thing that goes into these events, but they're also putting their time in, right. you know, to, to stuff days like this. Days are not getting paid at work. Oh, and catching bait. Exactly. days away from the family. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Weeks and exactly. you know, for the tournaments and all that. So yeah. People don't understand before a tournament like that, you re-spool everything, like everything, oh, yeah. all everything new line. before every tournament. You're talking yep. like, man, all new tournament Even tackle. some days in between days, we're putting brand new line yeah. on, on the rods we fished the day before. You know, right. if we think there's any chance any of any chance. kind of yeah. little fray or anything, yeah. Brand new. And that's like, another thing. I feel like it's not even really about the money. I mean, it is, obviously, but it, there, there's more of a competition, like you were talking about oh, with yeah. your brother, right? right. You know, the, just, you had to get the bigger fish. Oh, yeah. And I feel like with most tournament anglers and, and guys like us, it, it's just like a, you're born with it. You just, you love competition and you want to go against the best of the right. best and beat the best of the best. Yep. I mean, that's that's, I feel like it's, to me, it's more important than the money, you know, in yep. a way. I mean, the money's great because you're, you yep. know, you're winning it when you're done. You need the money. Yeah, the money's good. To live. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that the, the competition aspect is just as important right. in fishing these Definitely, events. Definitely, for sure, 100%. Yeah. You know, it's, and having fun. Right. It's I mean, actually like when I started uh, entering the rebound, you know, our 52 merit in Jamie's tournaments, you know, right. was like 2010 or something. And, uh, you know, it was like I could have kept fishing with my brother and our team on the Get Some boat, you know, and we we did so well for so many years. But it was like I wanted to branch off and sure. and beat up on my big brother a little bit. Well, try at least. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Do your own thing. And, uh, yeah. And a yeah, lot of days I got him. Uh, Casey or Chip? Yeah, Casey. Yeah. Mainly Casey because, you yeah. know, he's he's just out there every day too, right, just right. like me. And he mm-hmm. fishes everything. And who's well, the, who's the better angler? Up. Anglers nowadays? I don't know. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. You were him. I'm a little rusty. He's really rusty. So yeah, <laughs> chips. The, chips the bottom fishing guy, right? Yeah, he he yeah. loves bottom fishing. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's yep. That's a he's bottom heard, fishing fool. I've heard all Jer- Jerry's stories about <laughs> fishing yep. with Chip. He's like, fuck this spot. It's yep. done. We're out of here right now. He's like, Dude, he'll he'll drop one bait and he's like, they're not here. Fuck it. Let's yep. go. That's yeah. it. It's like, well, that's how it is. I think when you do those, he's those charters, like you go go yeah. go. Right. If it they're is, not, you're yeah. not getting a bite. You go right to the next spot. That's right? it. Yeah. You know, you'll Time's hit, money. sometimes you'll hit 10, 12 spots and not have a bite or have little bites. You know, and you're like get rid of it and then you hit one spot and it's just on you know and that's, right. that's how it is sometimes it's crazy because we talked we talked about like i spent a couple i went a couple trips to uh, venice mm. and those dudes go 60 miles to a, yeah. a, a, um, a, a rig and then if the fish aren't there they're gonna go 40 miles again yeah to sucks. another one where it's we're just like dude Sometimes I see you guys in 80 feet of water, 70 yep. feet of water. Just 60, like, 60 yeah. 20 feet of water. Yeah, yeah, you know, wherever Sometimes they are. I'm in between our sea buoy and our Hillsborough yeah. Inlet markers, and I'm catching sailfish, I'm That's catching crazy. kingfish, I'm catching Ugh. everything in there. You know, yeah. it's especially like now wintertime, these wintertime days, the high tides. Yeah. When that clean water pushes in there, if there's bait in there and stuff, sure. you know, there's, there's a lot of fish in there. Sure. Catch a lot of sailfish. Stink I leave actually my full spread out. Till I get to the sea buoy, you know, 
And then I'll still have one or two out almost going in the inlet. And and I can't even tell you how many sailfish I've caught. On the way in. Yeah, there's actually a hole in between our sea buoy and the inlet. Don't talk about that on this podcast. Are you listening, guys? Don't talk about this. uh, (laughs) Don't talk about that. There's a hole uh, in there. And (laughs) man, all the kinds of bottom fish in there. Granted, there's usually start off small in there. There's also sharks. You guys will probably die. Sharks all over the place. There's sharks everywhere. Yeah, the bait gets in there. Sardine gets stacked up in there. And there's sailfish in there a lot of times, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, the the wahoo, most of my big wahoo I caught literally right out front of the, the lighthouse peddler. there. Okay. On like peddler. an outgoing time. Right. Fish peddler too Me over too. a commercial. Me yeah. too. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> the biggest one I caught, the 65 pounder, I mean, he was literally, I hooked him in, I think like 100 feet. And he took me out to 400, but I hooked him right at that mouth of that inlet. I mean, right. literally right Why'd there. Why'd you let him take you 300 feet deeper? Just she, asking. I mean, that's a long. Well, I, first of all, I was using Doug's rod. To four hundred. No, the, he, he from hundred to four hundred. It gets deep quick, dude. It gets it's like drops. That's like seventeen miles, bro. You could even see it in the photo on the. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. With the fish, with the depth finder, mm. sir. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Many fish take me deeper too. So see, yeah. it, it's it not my happens. side. No one's on your side, Fred. Especially Ever. wahoos. You know. <laughs> right. Not you know, those ginormous <laughs> ones, like the and 90 you got to get on them, you know, you got to, well, in your case, you got to pedal them feet pretty exactly. quick and stay on them, you know, See? chase them down before a boat cuts you off or something mm. these days. Uh, yeah, dude, don't even get me started. Oh, here we go. <laughs> but I really want to talk about sail fishing because yeah. we got, as you know, we got the sailfish smackdown it's right Heck around yeah. the corner and uh, guys come from all over and they're, this, this to me, this tournament to me is kind of like our cup, you know, I, I, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a totally different event than uh, our Summer Slam series, just like Jamie's, you know, how his sailfish is totally different than his slam. Right. And um, I just really want to dive into like, you're great at sailfishing. So do you have tips for guys that are doing this? I know it could be different on the kayak, but I mean, for the amount that you catch, you know, what can you tell these guys oh, yeah, that are going to sure. compete in this event? Um, I, well, the most of your kayaks kind of fish, what, from like Pompano Pier? Yeah, they're going right the up there. North Current. That's it. To the Stink Hole. That's it. And I see them get pushed back further sure. with, with the current a lot of times. But, yeah. you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of wrecks off Pompano Pier. When it's really slow, there's not a lot of bait around, stuff like that kind of incidents even if there's green water in there and the water just looks like crap yeah but if it's slow and there's not many sailfish around there's a lot of wrecks out there at pompano pier that hold bait and you'll collect resident sailfish off them sure they're the bigger yeah. ones the, the little chubbier ones right yeah actually a lot Those of little times skinny kinda, ones yeah right, they're travelers they're moving a lot exactly you know so yeah yeah you actually see that with the wreck fish and the resident sailfish you know? right and some days i'll go to the stink hole right out front. Um, you know, I've been getting bites just inside of it on the south side of it. So I'll fish there, I'll get a bite there, catch them or not. Then you go to the outside of it, you know, maybe see a little bit of water. You fish all around the stink hole. But um, the if, you rex, got, if you guys fish at the stink hole, you'll probably get like fungus on your feet. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Well, Stay that was the old the joke, hole. you know, you catch a mahi or something from the stink hole, it's a little bit sweeter than, yeah. you know. It tastes like water, But uh, <laughs> No, uh, yeah, the wrecks hold a lot of bait, so um, you can fish, you know, fish wrecks, and I mean, you get other bites too, but sure. if you're getting other bites, there's fish there. Right. And it, I mean, man, if there's, I've been in so many bonita bites where I'm catching wahoo bites in between them, or, you know, or tuna bites oh, right yeah, in them. Oh, yeah, they're eating those, those bonita. Sailfish right in them. Oh, yeah. Usually you catch a wahoo, and there's a sailfish somewhere around. Yeah. You know, just uh, actually, what was it, last year, um, me and my mate Anthony, it was like one of the first, or two years ago or something, one of the first days he got on the boat with me on the rebound and started working with me. Um Man, it was just, it was crazy. It was one of my best sailfish bites on a charter. And it was like a two and a half hour charter, three hour charter, because it was real rough. Yeah. But um, yeah, I started off right out front. I seen the bait out there, right on a stink hole. We got a couple sailfish bites right there. You know, I, we drifted out. I ran back to the stink hole, set up again, didn't get any bites. Okay, so we caught the residents, you know? Right. So then I started going to the north with the current, and yeah. the water looked good. There was a little edge, you know? Nice. And there's a bunch of boats fishing just south of us. So I pretty much wanted to stay in front of those boats because, you know, you kind of get ahead of the pack. You get the fish coming from the sure. north going south, so you, you get the better bites most yeah. of the time. And there are those pods, you know, just right. Right. And right. also sailfish 
the hunt into the current, correct? Right. Yeah. So they like our the current, current's they normally going out of the south to the north. So the fish are coming this way typically, right? right? Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. It's usually coming north current. You know, just like you said, south going to the north and right. the fish are coming across it. Yeah. You get in front, so just south, pick them so. off, basically. Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that day it was... um there was just bait and I could actually see the bait on top and they come up balling for a second. I'd be sitting there with the kites out and all of a sudden, Anthony, reel up baits out of the water. You know, we'd reel up our kite baits out of the water and I'd push ahead with the boat to where the bait was. I'd drop the baits back down and then there they were. And there was boats by like the second hour that day, we had seven, eight, nine fish and um, missing, you know, we missed like, another five or six or seven because we were just by that time we were just hooking baits on and throwing them (laughs) out there and not you know rigging them and and, uh rigging them on with their wax line or your bands nice so we were kind of double hooking some of them and we you know we get them up jumping everywhere and stuff and then you come off and see the bait go flying but it was pretty incredible because we kind of stayed with the fish and the packs of the fish and there was other boats all around us and i mean they literally got like one bite that day And then topped it off with like a 45, 50 pound dolphin at the end. So oh, that that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm that other boat normally where like everyone's catching fish in my face. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm hey, like, dude. You know what? It happens to all of us. What's in those going tournaments. on here, dude? Yeah. He went to South Africa to catch a sand shark. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. I caught a mahi too. Oh, mahi too. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Which we get here. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Pretty, uh, yeah, pretty depressing. Caught a uh, yesterday or today. How many giraffes have you ever seen? You know, let's get to the bottom of this right now. Stan. <laughs> Why does he have such bad luck? Do you think it's more skill, or do you think he's got maybe something on his boat that could be? What's what's something that you guys talk about in like the chartering club, I guess, where it's really bad luck? Because I just really want to figure this out with him. We don't understand why he sucks. Most people say it's bananas, right? But I right. wish it was bananas. Yeah, I don't think it's <laughs> that bananas. That would be an easy solution. Right? Yeah. I would just be like, Fuck. I've had some of my best days with bananas and won a yeah. lot of money. That's so. So we got to get to the bottom of this. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should search your boat. There's search something it. red. I don't that's, even. That's what it does for Doug us. Doug Perez red. makes my rigs. So wait, so, so right, red. So they're clean. Red's bad luck for us. Actually, Steve Waters did an article about that on me. With the, did the he red really? Thing. Yeah. Well, you mean like bad luck, or like if the just fish can luck. see red? Yeah. No, it's just bad luck for us. So bad. you're saying if the color red is in your boat, it's present. You that's why he somebody said black wearing red he or something. The black and they red. usually have the the bad luck on my. Oh, boat look, really? speaking of red, like you have that. yeah. that's your hoo rags, bro. It's your fault. <laughs> no, Dude, I wear your. Well, that's your logo, hoo-rags. sir. I wear extreme hoo rags and fail. Speaking of red, <laughs> which from Stan I'm guessing Hunt, now you probably won't wear it. From but. Stan Hunt to your ears, we did, we did get some awesome look, new extreme is, hoo rags. This is which why I fail. This is why I fail. Which is a gift. What? From me to Heck you, yeah, sir. Been... I'll take it. I'll wear it. Oh, don't wear it, dude. And, it's bad uh, luck. It's bad luck, dude. I'm not getting any bites, so I'll just take it off. Yeah, know? see? That's maybe right. that's good luck. Actually, maybe this I could be the remedy of said, your issue. Uh, nope. I already wear them. There's something wrong with you. There's a reason why. Are you putting sun lotion on and then grabbing the baits? That's a thing, right? That's a big thing. Oh, oh yeah. I don't wear that. Mm-hmm. Your dad told me not to do that three years ago, and that's when I won. He did. That's when I won third place in the tournament. Oh, yeah, you got a fish that day. I got two fish. Finally. Yeah. Maybe you should do that again then. I got I mean, two fish. So yeah. Lube up your hands and sunblock. Yeah. No, he told me not to do that. Oh, and you didn't okay, do it for so the first time. No, I, I, I don't. I never did it, but he like was the first to make, make me like aware. Well, Stan and I are very perplexed right now because this, <laughs> hey, is, man. this is a major issue. For Some us. people just go out and don't catch I fish. I mean, we're on a fishing yeah. podcast and you can't catch that's fish. That's it too. Well, we're on a fishing podcast and you can't spell, so what's it? <laughs> I mean, come on. hey That's true. That's true. Uh, oh, my God. True. Back to... Um, <laughs> Sail fishing. Back to... How different does the... Like, so when you were a kid and you are fishing here, like, how different does the inlet look? Like, how much different is it? It's, uh, it's, be... it's changed a little bit. Well, you're you're to... still pretty young, though. So, But, like, I hear, like, old-timers, dude, like... Like Tom Green will tell you that this place oh, is so, oh, yeah. like, it's so different. Yeah. It used to be like all woods in his yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, you know? like, yeah. That was crazy difference. But um, yeah, actually that the South Jetty seemed like, I mean, it wasn't longer, but it seemed like that because the beach was a little bit different in there. Mm-hmm. We used to surf all the time. It was like a killer wave in there. And you could actually snorkel all through there in hmm. that South Jetty on the south side of it. And there was nice coral. And oh, my gosh. Yeah. Coral. There's a little snook, reef there. Just yeah. hundreds and hundreds of snook, no like Boca snook. Inlet. No more snook there. 
pretty mm, much. There's, 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 there's still stuff. here and there, maybe. Yeah, there's, they didn't stack up like they do up north. No, no, not like so much. At all. I mean, I, I know at Sebastian, like, dudes will go underwater, and there'll be, like, schools of slapfish, like, yeah, everywhere. Well, we like, had that huge die-off a few years ago, didn't we, with that winter? It killed, like, all yeah. the, the breeders, I think, or something like that. Mm. Heard a few of them, for sure. Mm. And, and how, are you, how are you rigging all your stuff for, for sail fishing? Um, rods and everything for these guys you know it's most people start off 40 or 50 pound uh fluorocarbon leaders right you know like five or six so uh some people use vmc's uh circle hooks yeah. some people use the eagle claws the uh, laser sharps which right. i kind of like them a little bit better a little thinner which mm -hmm. i feel you kind of get a little yeah a little, little better hookup for yeah. me usually i guess but i've used vmc's a lot um I like, you know, if it's not rough, if it's calm, I'll downsize my everything. You know, especially when you have good good anglers. Like on a charter boat, you can't do it too much. We got to use at least 40 pound, you know. Stock which, stuff, basically. Yeah, I do get into 30 pounds sometimes. Okay. Lighter spinning rods or something. Right. But uh, sail fishing is crazy, man. It's, um, some days they'll eat 50, 60, 70, 80 pound mono. Oh, oh, they don't wire. care. They'll eat 60 pound wire. Yeah. 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 Yep. Some days they eat wire better than mono. Mm, crazy. Um, I use titanium a lot. Yeah. And it seems like they don't mind titanium at all. Like really? Some days I catch most of my fish on titanium. And Do you think that's the color of it? Because it's black normally. And then like it does steel help. leader is like brown. Yeah. I mean, in the, uh, in the, well, there's a couple things to it. Different color waters. Yeah. It'd be a little bit different, yeah. but mainly the wire is a little more stiffer, you know, to where your titanium right. is a little more monoish. So the bait's got a lot of mm. natural flow to it, to where the wire kind of stiffens them up a little bit. That's true. I mean, presentation's everything. Oh, You're yeah. absolutely right there. Yeah. And I don't think fish see the titanium as much, you know, either mm. as, mm. as like the wire. Okay. I used it in the Bahamas for a tournament <clears throat> and I got like destroyed by barracudas like, yeah the bahamas it don't matter really and and it would like i would keep on using it because it's it literally 10 times more because like mm -hmm. wires like two bucks for a yeah thing and then like for the, sure the titanium is like 20 bucks but expensive like expensive as heck but it doesn't but it's supposed to last longer it's like supposed mm -hmm. to like you catch a few fish but sure. it, yeah. for, for me like i just got it was like curly cued every Quite up. yeah because it's you know what those barracudas are just chewing on your... Yeah. God. If you're putting it's a so lot annoying. of pressure on them, too, it does that curly cue because mm. it kind of stretches out a little more than yeah. it should. Yeah, and then right. it doesn't have, the, like, the... Right. I don't get... I guess the rebound, right? I didn't yeah, want to say rebound, but... Right, it is that true. Now, yeah. are, are you using on your reels, are you using uh, line or are you using braid line. on all your stuff? Because that's been a big debate lately in our in our events right yeah i mean some people like the braid as backing and they put line on the top sure. shot for if they get a lot of line out yeah you kind of got a better retrieval with the braid it doesn't get as big of a bow in it right and you know you kind of stay with the fish more sure i'm kind of i like mono right i like lighter stuff sometimes i'll get into 20 and 30 pound but man with sailfish the it seems like the more heat you put on them the more they want to fight Mm -hmm. You know, a lot right. of tournaments, and this is like a big key to the tournaments, and uh, you get a sailfish come up in your kites. You know, generally, it's usually the right side first, you know, because the fish really? are coming. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. If you're sitting there with your kites up, you know, towards the beach, um, mm -hmm. you got an east wind. It's generally going to be bite on your right side because they're coming through from the north. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a fish on there, and a lot of times we'll let the fish eat it, eat it, eat it. Just put a little drag on it where it pops it out of the clip. Yeah. And actually hooks the fish at the same time. And then we'll back right off again and let that fish kind of swim around. He's hooked, but he's swimming around. Right. And basically you're bringing up any other fish that are with them or around them. You know, and if you don't start reeling on them real hard and pumping like people do, he'll kind of just sit crazy. there. Yeah. yeah, and then he'll start moving to the south again. And you can raise more fish up with them, you know. So the other guys are, you know, reel up the kite baits and you pitch spinning rods over top of the fish. And around the fish. Yeah. And another one will just pop up out of nowhere. And you're like, oh, my gosh. All right. Now we got a double <laughs> or a triple or, you nice. know, I mean, I've seen eight and ten fish pop up off of one. So. See, and that's that's where I feel a lot because we get a lot of guys that lose fish in the sailfish tournament. And, and it's sailfish. Mm -hmm. And I think their biggest problem is I think these guys are just they're just going to they get excited it and is. they're just trying to pull in and. I, I've lost a lot of money in Jamie's tournaments too. One yeah. particular tournament uh, was a Miami tournament. 
and we ended up getting like sixth place, but we should have been second place, won a daily one day. Um, but our one of our last fish, you know, we caught five fish. Um, and our last fish today, we get it on a flatline bite, and the fish comes straight up, jumping, doing 360s, you know. So at this time, when he's coming straight up, the slack awesome. and everything from, you know, the fish being oh, out sure, there coming yeah. up, hooked the fish already. Right. And he's up there jumping. Yeah. So, so now you're getting all... Anybody's going to think, real, 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 get tight as fast as you can. But in reality, you do not want to come tight to that fish. Because what happened, as soon as my guy... He, you know, he reeled real tight and hard to the fish. And as soon as he came tight and I was like, no, don't reel, let him go. Pop him off right away. Yep. Shaved him right off, mm. you know, to where if he would have just sat there and backed off, yep. you know, and just let, let the him fish do, thing. do it, do it, whatever he wants to do. And then they get down and settle down and then you just barely push it up slow, you know, and we would have caught the fish. We would have made like another 80 something thousand that day. <laughs> Whoa. We won. Uh, I, I think we won. Nice. Yeah. Did you guys it leave was, that guy? Are you guys still friends? That one hurt. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, it's, it's you, fishing. So it's, I think another problem with the, with the on, on the kayak fighting those fish is that we're literally sitting on the water. So if it's right. big, and usually in January, that's yeah, when our low. tournaments, it, um, what happens is we will be on this like four foot swell, right? right. For instance. So when, we, when you go up and you're tight and then you come back down, guys aren't taking up that four feet of slack. Well, if, are you guys fishing circle hooks in those three? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's so, mandatory. Yeah. yeah, so, man, have to. the biggest thing I can tell you is realize that when a circle hook's hooked, it's hooked. That's it. You can go free spool. Mm -hmm. He can jump, put slack everywhere. Yeah. It's fine. Right. You know, circle hook's in there. You're not going to lose them. So when they're really pulling, yeah. back your drag off. Let them really pull. Just right. let them take it. Because he's going to stop, and he's going to turn, and you're going to reel it right back in most of the time, sure. too. You know? So, yeah, it's just people think they got to really come tight quick and get hard, but mm -hmm. you don't in reality. You know, it's... So the trick is just calm on. down. Yeah, Let him calm. do his thing. If yeah. you, like kayakers, what do they fish? Maybe two or three rods, kind of? Yeah. Usually in a tournament, you'll have a, one on the top and one deep, and that's as much, and some guys will jig at the same it's time. It's hard to fish even it's now. It's hard to fish more bite. than... yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, if they get a bite on the kayak, I understand you want to catch them. Yeah. Sure. But still, at the same time, if you want to win the tournament, and that's the difference, catching one fish mm -hmm. or hooking that fish and having the spinning rod and, you know, throw it out there and get right. another bite or just your other flat line or something sitting out there, just leave it out there. Because mm. yeah. when you're fighting that fish going forward most of the time going after him you right. can let the flat line out back you know and be okay and then you're gonna get covered up on another one yeah and then you catch that one and even you know if the one's running just back it down a little bit let them go put it in the rod holder catch your one fish and then get back to your other one and you can catch them you know and, yeah and, so and line capacity and in that case like for us line capacity would be paramount because if you don't have four or five hundred yards of line and you just free right. spool one of them. But even the but spinner if you like rods, let him you know? rip, you know, yeah. like he's going to go away by the time you reel that thing That's, in. Yeah. Most of the time you think that, but most of the time they're, a lot of the fish stop and they'll just kind of hang out. Just post up. When there's no pressure on them, there's no, right. re there's no reason for them right. to they keep running. They think they just, you know, they think they're lost and they're just back to normal again. Wow. Makes sense. Yeah, a lot it does of, make You know, sense. granted, sure, no, a lot of happens. fish are different. Right. You know, fish so are fish. Sometimes yeah. you get spooled. Yeah. But for me to double up on sailies, boys. But well, I think in, in the kayak tournaments, too, that would really help. You know, if you go from one and you get a double on, it'd be uh, a little situation. It'd be tough. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But that's how you're going to win the tournament. You yeah. know, you catch two instead of one. And hmm. and, the, and the, they're almost always together, right? Like, yeah. it's almost it's so rare For that sure. you just find a rogue sailfish, yep. right? It's like, it's not a grouper. It's like, yep. they yeah, they're going to be in pods. pods. Yeah. yeah. You know, unless, like you times, said, the locals, you know, right? They'll yeah, be the kinda... residents are usually single or sometimes, you know, a double or something if you're lucky. Gotcha. But if you pull one fish off a wreck, that's that's an awesome bonus. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what you need. You need that extra single fish. You know, if you're not batting 100, because mm -hmm. you really need to bat at least 95% in these sure. tournaments to be in that top five. Yeah. And guys like Art and uh, Skip and, you know, all these guys, Jimmy David, they're like, they're close to batting at 95 to 100 percent every time. You know, granted, you have your your missed tournaments where you're a little off. Sure, but, but do, do you these think guys depth? are incredible, and they're you know they're anglers and what they do as captains and driving on fish and oh, it's, just it's a skill. That. 
Yeah, it's man. an art. Oh, it's it's, such, a team, like it's chess, such a team. You know, effort. It's such a team effort. Yeah, it's yep. also the team right. team aspect. It is. Really the rotation is. of the bait and what goes out when. Yep. And what? Oh man, dude. It's a system. You That's why I don't like. Sure. I wouldn't want to be anything but like an observer, just because I don't want to get yelled at as much. You <laughs> yeah, know? you definitely get yelled at a couple oh, times. Oh, you get yelled at so much. If you're not in the uh, game, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If your head's not in it. You gotta be in the zone, man. That's any captain. The tournament zone. Some are a lot worse, but oh, some are so bad. Even if you go out for fun, like, dude. Guy just don't. He's got it in him. Like yeah. Doug, Doug's Doug's the worst man. Like Doug will scream at you. Oh like, yeah, he'll yell at you. Have yeah. a beer, dude. We're just hanging out. Like yeah. some of us are, you know, loud because we got to be loud to, yeah, 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 to, yeah. to to let you know sure. so you hear us too. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, that's on my charter boat too. Especially like I've had a couple of my mates, the younger mates and stuff. Oh man, you yell at us all the time. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not like, like a, yelling right. at you. I'm like yeah. just being loud so you can hear me. You, <laughs> you know, like to, yeah. you, I got to get it in your head the first right. time. And most of the time that doesn't happen. So, yeah, sure. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> what I'm thinking and what they're doing is just, they couldn't do what I'm thinking. No, you know? Of and, course. Yeah. yeah. Unless like some guys like, you know, a few of my mates, Thomas Bartis or Anthony, you know, I've I've had for a while, so we get clicking, you know, like, yeah. like football team or something. Sure, but, of course, that's yeah. how it is. I mean, it's just literally like, a team, but sport, not like the Raiders. Sure. You guys are more like, <laughs> sir, a good team. Dude, just don't <laughs> even say the Patriots. All right, I would I mean, never. <laughs> fucking, cheaters. you had to bring up the Raiders. See, <laughs> I think I meant to say faders. But. <laughs> It's just yeah, not fair, man. I guess All right, we so can't say Stan, much. So. Stan, Stan and I are, are so, huge <laughs> Oakland Raider fans, and we're both very. Disappointed. I don't think John Gruden will watch this podcast, but if you do, he's not going to watch it. Dude. We are not he's happy with the Amari Cooper trade. Do we agree there? Yeah, definitely season? not. We definitely understand not, Khalil yeah. Mack, right? Yeah. I think we both understand Money that. Thing we, we can we, get we can it. hear that, but but d- please just don't trade Derek. Carr. Gruden is game planning yeah, for next not. season. Do not. Do not. Don't trade Derek Carr. No car. All right. We we love Carr. We 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 got little car dolls. We know him. We're no. friends with him. We love him. Just he doesn't don't know this, Gruden, guys. But, Gruden you know. is game planning for next year at Pee Wee League, which is oh, where he'll be. Stop talking. it. <laughs> so there's that. Do you know Derek Carr is my Instagram friend? I bet you he is. No, I, I'm you not know. kidding. You hit him and slid in his DMs. No, but what I'm saying is, I followed him, but he also followed me. Oh wow! Ooh. Not Ooh. personally the extreme page. You guys exchange Pretty DMs? Good. Not yet. Hmm. I don't think you can talk to him. Like people that have all those followers on like Instagram, they mm-hmm. have like a block or something. Mm. Yep. So tell us about your Bigfoot story, dude, because we're running out of time. <laughs> oh, yes. He does have a Bigfoot story, and it's spectacular. You didn't hear yeah. it. Well, Stan told me you're a hunter, right? Yeah. And you got yeah. cameras set up. Running all our life up New York, New Jersey. And you know, my family, actually, my mom and dad are born in New Jersey. So uh, up there I'm in from New Jersey. In West Milford, you know, West Milford. Oh, yeah. Mountains, kind mm-hmm. of about Catskills. Yeah, up north. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Actually, I was just there, too, a few days ago. But nice. But passing through. But we went up to our New York farm and stuff up there. Brought my kids. You know, it was freaking awesome. They're riding four-wheelers in the snow, doing Sweet. 360s and, and going people crazy. Have a raw, the, people have this stigma of Jersey here. They think they, they call it, like, dirty Jersey. Yeah, like and they, they see the city. They and, think it's north. No, they see people like yeah. Joe, and they're like, <laughs> oh, shit, that's New Jersey. That's what happens. <laughs> Like, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what you get. I, I vaguely missed, by the way. On purpose. No, you hit me, bro. No, I God. vaguely missed. Your balls aren't that big. Sorry, <laughs> right in the knee and the, <laughs> in the head. Uh, but yeah, they have this stigma, man, and it's beautiful up there. It is. And the no, fishing's nice. good. Once you I get mean, away from the airports and more in the yeah, mountains, yeah, yeah. it's You got to be careful of Lyme beautiful. disease, but other than yeah, that. Yeah, actually, my mom got it that's from there. so bad. Really? I think everyone's got I've gotten it. Uh, we took I our dog up there. The dude had at least 40 ticks on him in like 20 minutes. And I had treated the whole area. We had like this little break bracelet like bug repellents on him everything a shirt with permethrin he had at least like 25 30 yeah. ticks on him it was crazy dude yeah no it's nuts yeah, maggie's there. grandparents house like dude it was absurd yeah so many and they're All everywhere right. here too it's crazy but... ticks yeah but mm-hmm. i don't think they have lyme disease as bad right what the hell is yeah, up with no i think it's a certain deer tick they call it a deer tick it's right. full of lyme disease yeah we have a different type of tick so you were telling me earlier about <laughs> you but you were out with your brother hunting yeah so basically when i was younger I was probably, probably like 10, something like that. Okay. My brother Chip, or Brad, Brad Hunt Jr., you know, he would, I hunted with him a lot when I was younger, because uh, kind of Casey, my older brother, would kind of go with his friends, you know, and, right. and Chip would actually take me out and still love me like a little brother, you know. Chip's yeah. a good dude. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, anyways, he would take me out there and, like, just scare the sh- crap out of me, right? Take me out at, like, four in the morning, 
through the dark, through the mountains, like trampling all through this. And I'm like, ah, like so scared, you know? And, and and before the fact, you know, every night he would torch me. Oh, there's bears, there's chupacabas and Bigfoots. Oh, and, shit. You know, and tell me all this. So I actually kind of believed it, you know, sure. I was young. Oh, you're already shitting so, yourself. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so the one time we're out there, we're hunting. Uh, I'm in a tree stand. He's in a tree stand about 100 yards away from me. And he called, we had little VH ra- radios. And he calls right. me and he's like, man, I think there's a big bear or something coming at you, like coming by your stand, like watch out. And I was like, yeah, yeah right, bullshit. you know, whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, this thing, like, no lie, like two minutes after he says that, like I start hearing this like crunching, like gnarly, like sounds coming through the woods, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> um, like, like heavy, like it, f- like heavy, like you could hear him like growling and like moaning coming oh, through the woods because he moaning? could smell like the food and the oh. apples and stuff we put out. <laughs> That's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. They sound pretty like humanly like uh, uh. when they growl and stuff. It's, it's like pretty crazy. Like a fat crazy. old man just having sex with a <laughs> present. Nah, not so much. So. <laughs> How'd that go? No. More like a uh, <laughs> monster coming in and okay, uh, same growling thing. at you and All doing right. some crazy stuff. And it was uh, like running at you. No, it was coming in slow, but this was, it just got dark and uh, my brother was getting ready to get out of his stand and come get me. So this thing comes in and I didn't see it yet until it kind of like popped out of the bush and it's a giant bear. This thing was like 600 pounds, you know, but I really couldn't see it and it kind of came in weird and then it was laying down, you know, kind of eating apples and I was like, just like stared and like, what? I couldn't even move. I was so afraid, right? So my brother gets out of his stand and he starts <laughs> walking at me and he, for some reason, he puts a glow stick on his head. Oh, boy. And he didn't what? know the bear was still there. So he gets about 15 yards away from the thing. The thing stands up like this, you know, puts his hands up and all. Like, hands up, I was shoot. like, oh my gosh. And like from there, I just put my gun on the back of the thing's head, you know, in case it went at my brother. And I'm like, Chip, stop. And he stops. And I'm like, he's like, what? I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't even talk, you know, I'm like, bear, you're stuttering. Yeah. Don't move. And like, I seen him like right then he kind of think he's seen it, you know, and he put his gun on it too. And then I started yelling at the bear, you know, and it kind of ran away. Oh but my God. Yeah, I'm so sure in person kinda, they're probably yeah, it's, twice the it's size, more right? No, they're the yeah. same size in person as they are on TV, but yeah, they're just much. in person. But another time I was walking through a little path. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And uh, I look over and see one standing straight up at me, you know, and I actually thought it was like a Bigfoot. Like, it scared the living crap out of me. And I was by myself in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, so do you yeah. think that there is a Bigfoot creature out there? I don't know. We're discovering some crazy things in this world, right? New planets and maybe life on other planets or I mean, some... Uh, craziness uh, here's the thing i i i think i'm t- i'm tending to kind of agree with fred a little bit more that maybe there isn't a bigfoot no i'm not i believe in aliens one. no I, there you, are aliens i know always, that for a fact you've always said there isn't no bigfoot. i never said there isn't i just said you i know, think there, out of all the weird ridiculous shit you believe in like the bigfoot is the most like probable one that is real well, he did tell us he was probed by the aliens, right? Yes, correct. He loves to many get years ago. Man. He loves to you get know. probed. Well, probing is sort of like an art-ish thing, right? Maybe I mean, in these Germany. aliens, huh? Maybe in Germany, it could be. I'm There's telling Reed, you said that. Some deep dark corner of the web where I'm sure probing is an art form, but normal, it's not. <laughs> what are you talking about? You literally just said probing is an art. <laughs> Yeah, that came out of his mouth, right? Probing yeah, is an art. It did. Well, it's, yeah, 100%. It's on, you know. it's on camera. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, <laughs> and, that was, I don't know where you were going with that, but. And when you were, at me either. And when you yeah. were in the woods, like you've never, you never saw like a UFO or something out I, there. I have seen some crazy stuff. Really? In the, like, and granted, I go and I will sit like in hog hunt, like through the night. Can like, I go hog hunting? I'll with sit you? out there. Yeah, we can. Can I go too? Please. We can do a show, a no, show hog you. hunting. No, no, no I want to go. No. Why? Yeah, no, we got plenty of room. See, Fred's just angry because he doesn't catch or kill anything. He doesn't have closed-toed shoes. Like, you can't go hunting. Just need boots, fishing boots, rubber boots. That's all you need. Do you know what this guy wants to do? He wants to go and kill iguanas, right? Yeah. Like, he's this big, badass guy. <laughs> I want to see him out there with a boar, with a wild boar mm. charging at you. And do you, you guys use bows? I do. I, I hunt a lot of bows. That's awesome. And That's we give you like a bow, them. and we'll see what you do. 
Let's do that. You realize you don't just stand in the thing and let them charge you, right? They like, charge you, right? A lot right? of times, you don't have a choice. Oh! Yeah, but that's not the plan. It's not the plan. Well, it could be it's, our plan. It's not the plan to walk into your tree stand coming down the berm and there's a pack of pigs coming at you that way. And I mean, you got your bow in your hand, so you got no choice but to shoot what one. What if you right? miss? You gotta shoot one. But if you miss, miss, it's probably better than actually shooting one. Because the one that you shoot is going to see you and come right at you. He's so mad. Like hundreds of times. You That's know, why when, I was, in, when I was in Africa, they have warthogs. And like they, they, uh, they, they call them bush pigs. But God, I want to see this. So I, leave out of the, I leave out of the cabin one night. Or the first night I'm in Mozambique. And we're, dude, we're talking about there's no civilization for hundreds of miles. Like it's right. way My brother deep. just went. It's, it's crazy. so ridiculous. So there's hippos, there's bush pigs, there's all these animals that are like literally right outside the thing. And so I go out and I hear all this like snorting and romping in the woods, right? It's pitch black, probably almost close to midnight. And I ran back right in the cabin. I'm like, dude, somebody's got to go with me. <laughs> they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, first. Dude, someone has to go with me to my room. And they're like, ah, you're being a pussy. So I grabbed this like hu huge butcher knife. But like people don't understand that pigs are crazy, dude. Like Grab the will... closest hammer I could find. Uh, yeah, like anything you can take with it. you is going to help, right? Like, well, it probably won't help. Yeah, but Maybe, you know. If he's on top of you, you can get him like the old thing in the movies, right? And stick it in him. Yeah, but like those red dawn. fall on you. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. red dawn. Yeah, but those boars, they get huge too, right? They I mean, do. They Some get... of them are real big. Not those ones in Africa. That's a species that... that They're what little, we right? have here is a completely big. different like, yeah. species. They get really They'll get 800 pounds, yeah. Yeah, the ones here get like monsters. The ones, if people raise them in a pen, they can get huge. But out out in the wild, they can't really get too big. Maybe like three to four hundred pounds. That's so because small. they're they're running so much. You know, they're they're Trying using a lot of their. They're more athletic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now wait, I, I never really understood this. I think me and you talked about it. Is a is a wild boar a wild pig from the a boar farm? Is a male. Like, do they uh, lose their no. hair in like a farm right. and turn no. pink and it's fat? It's a different. They breed, are different. Breed them. Yeah, there's different pigs. There's gotcha. avelinas. There's Russian mixes. There's the Spanish ones are the ones that get the biggest, right? The the ones that came from. <laughs> I'm Spain. not sure, but it yeah. doesn't matter. Any you let any pig go, it doesn't matter what kind of pig it is. So like, it'll be feral in a few Pick months. A like, you and know especially be really cool. It'll start growing tusks. Like any pig. Can we out. get a lot like of a baby will... pig as a pet. Yeah, we've no. done that podcast. before. Like it'll be the logo. You have done that? Oh yeah, wild pigs like this big, and they become like friendly. Yeah, they're like dogs. They don't Let's have... Let's do it. I, I mean, they'll, they'll try and bite the heck out of you for a while, but... They'll bite you? Oh, yeah. They bite? They try and get you for a while. Anything... A, a wise man once told me that anything with a mouth will bite you. Until they learn that you're feeding them, right. and they kind of... They catch on. And they're really smart, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty like smart. They're like dogs. They're like oh, super yeah. smart. Yeah. Yep. Vietnamese hmm. pot belly, you could get one of those. Dude, we should get a pig. If it gets out of control, we'll make some bacon. Forget about it. No, we'll, we'll raise them up, and, and it'll be like our little mascot I'd for rather the have show. chickens, dude. Why do you want chickens? They're filthy, man. They make you gotta egg. get a pan and dirty. you gotta they like make eggs though. So what? Yeah. Go you buy fresh eggs. eggs. That's for sure. But ch chickens make <laughs> eggs. <laughs> what are you talking about? But Why would you we buy them? Make bacon. We did a whole yeah, but episode. Yeah, pork. You have to kill them and, first. <laughs> but we did a if whole episode. If you could episode, like milk it and have chicken come out, I'd be in. Let's get a pig. <laughs> but you can't. We did a whole episode. We talked for like an hour on if chickens oh, can God. survive underground if there was a cataclysmic event. Now, I believe... As a chicken farmer yourself. Now, I past. believe that the chickens would not survive and that the humans would end up having to eat like creatures in underground. Fred believes that they would be able to f to breed and keep making chickens. No, all I'm saying I don't is that get you, how you could even, farm I mean, chickens in I, the dark. I, I, That's I mean, what I'm I guess... But how are they going to eat? They don't need much room to get around if you they really... They need any room. You know. What are you going to feed them? You're, yeah, you you're gonna have them. to find Bugs? something to feed them. Good cricket stash somewhere. Or they something. Eat all the, yeah, you can raise crickets, dude. People do it all the time. <laughs> Why not? Stan's like, we're talking about chickens underground. What is going on? What do you think, the pet, you think, problem, think right? the pet store gets their uh, their crickets? Well, I'm not saying crickets. Do you but think I, there's a, they have a bunch of kids that fucking go out and pick up crickets out of the ground? Well, that's what we would have to do if we were stuck in a cave underground. No, you could raise the crickets. Well, you would do it. I'd be like the king. In the cave, so I would have yeah. like the big bone, and I'd be in charge of the down. people. Stan would be like a general in my caveman army. Yeah. So like and you would just in the you attend to the chickens. Yeah. So everyone under you knows how to read, and you don't. But Doesn't you matter. Be the king. Doesn't how matter. How that makes sense? Leader, did Genghis Khan know how to read? Yeah, dude, he was very well learned. 
Knowledgeable? Is that what we were looking Knowledgeable for? Knowledgeable and learned. But he is could learn it a word? Learn it is a word. And he could fight. He could, fight, he could ride so a horse. You wouldn't tell him. He could that. ride he a horse read. at speed and shoot birds out of the air with his arrow. That's I think that power. was Cupid or you know, uh, he was good with an arrow. That was bow the and cons. <laughs> Fred, I don't think you can even shoot a bow and arrow. <laughs> Let's go out I in the yard right need, now. I think we need to. Funny there. Yeah, Let's I go out in the yard Stan right now. Stan needs to take us out. We're going to go boar hunting hmm. and we're going to give you a bow and arrow. Okay. And we're going to see what you can do what with What kind that. of pound did you run it on your. Well, I've always shot right about 80 pounds. Oh, that's nothing. Fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if it's got to be 80 pounds, I'll shoot an 80-pounder. It's All hard right. to pull back, but you, you reach you out get and there. touch something. Now, Once you get there, you know, if, he, if he misses, or no, if he hits it, then he has a better chance of being charged? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm going to bullseye yeah. that dude right in the right. In the so heart. if I shot it on purpose and missed on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's like. Well, really, you just got to be able to run like, faster than whoever's I just with you. See oh, Fred, you know? I just want to see Joe Fred pull a run. Hamstring on the first two steps. I want to see him run, like book it, like with a boar chase. I would just. <laughs> you, you can usually run a little bit faster than you, you know, normal. Than you think. With something yeah, after you. Yeah. A little faster than you've ever run <laughs> oh, before. Oh, that would be so epic, man. God, I remember running awesome. from dogs when I was younger. Boy, I felt like I was doing 100 miles Oh, an yeah. Hour. Woo! Oh, my <laughs> Gone. God. Gone. You get a spark, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. You're running from animals. Man. Sure. All right, what else is next? Um, well, you. Yeah, we got we to gotta line up our hunting trip. Yeah, we got to line up the trip. Okay. We're going to film a vlog out of it. Stan, mm-hmm. what do you think? Yeah, let's we'll film it. a little vlog. Let's do it. Okay. And I think it'd be it'd be epic. I'll kill my first pig. I've never killed yeah, a man. wild boar. I don't I, think Fred has, right? No, I haven't killed one. Okay. No. But I've eaten them. I should warn you. Is there any tips that we need to... Yeah, there's a lot of tips. Yeah, yeah. stay we'll away from the front. Okay. Stay What's your most, the front why don't you tell us the most important tip when hunting wild boar? Most important tip? You, uh, If you don't have a good shot, don't take it. Hmm. Do don't shoot not, him in the tail, Joe. Do not shoot it. Because if you don't get it in that little quarter uh, section where you got to shoot them things, <laughs> oh, Fred. They're, they're gone. Done. They're done. I mean, they'll pour blood everywhere, you know, and you're trailing them for hundreds of yards and you never find them sometimes. They're so really? tough. It's they're crazy. hardy. Dude, they're yeah. like the freaking. So you, when you when you make that shot, you got to get them what in the head? No, dude. Well, it depends on what you're what? shooting. What are you, a professional boar hunter all of a sudden? Jesus it all Christ. depends on what you're shooting. It's got a if you're two shooting inch a skull, bow, it, it depends on what arrowhead you're shooting right to where you want to place your shot no laser if you're shooting gun. guns you know shotgun you just lay it on the shoulder with buckshot and shoot them or mm. their head mm. but mainly you, you shoot them right here in the shoulder a little okay. lower lower than higher is the biggest tip there. and they'll bleed out lower than higher yeah okay because you'll hit the heart or you get double lungs you double know lungs, but if you shoot bro. too high then you'll maybe clip one lung or something and the thing will it's run gone. and be gone yep and you're like yeah i got them so good but you can't find them no, you're about an inch or two high, you know. Wow. He's gone. I didn't Next know it was that like, uh, yeah, they're systematical. They're, crazy, you know, they're yeah. so tough, dude. Like I've seen my buddy my buddy has video of him shooting a through through and through in a, <clears throat> in our hunter terms, right? Through and through means it goes in him, it comes out the other side. Our mm-hmm. hunter terms? It's us. It's us hunters we know. Our, we yeah. know what's going on. Hunting things, you know. Oh god. Shoots this boar through and through. It's probably about a fifty pounder female. That thing runs fucking fifty yards, lays down. He shoots it again, right through. Blood squirting out of it like mad, dude. It just didn't die. Nuts, like, he just man. kept running. And she would like run, find a bunch of bushes, go and hide in the bushes. And she would like, it would look like she was dead. Sounds pretty yeah. morbid, sir. Dude, it's brutal. And that's man. what they do. That's yep. when you have to hit them in the heart or like in both lungs. Like you're not yeah. going to kill Why it. Why don't you just run at it with a knife and just. That, they <laughs> do that too. You know, yeah, they yeah. do that too. Okay. They'll, they'll, send dogs, and... they'll send dogs after them and the dogs will like. Grab them. Kind of stationary like yeah. target and you stick them with a spear you're not People a real spear man them. unless you x the dogs and you gotta do it with a knife yeah, you gotta and stand there with corn all around you and then jump on them no what you do oh, is you just that's how you really in the tree these. right rambo style with the with the spear i've done that too but your spear can't be a spear it's got to be like a bowie knife with a you've done that a regular harpoon and like you just like, you are a badass yeah. and you just jump out of the cool. tree like whoop. I didn't jump out of the tree, but well, then he didn't sounds do like it. Rambo sounded style. cooler anyway. Rambo, like Rambo does. Mm-hmm. That's how Rambo catches his deers. Damn man, we think I didn't know you did all that puke. with yeah. the with the hunt. Do it all. Yep. That's awesome. Been man. doing it. Yeah, it's what we do, bro. Long time. It's what we do, huh? It's what we do. Yeah. Man. <laughs> See, Fred's in. He thinks he's in your club now. So, yeah. yeah. Come on, dude. You're taking him yeah. boar hunting, right. and now he's yeah. gonna say we all the time. I could let him in. We'll see. Just stand in there. Good luck. We hunt boars. Don't go fishing with him. 
Uh, Why? He'll catch everything right in the face. <laughs> yeah. You'll have the best day ever right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, world record. Wahoo. That's uh, so bad. Okay. Seems like we got to take him trolling and catch him some fish. So yeah. He gets over his bad luck thing. I just yeah. want to go. I just want to go and film it. Like, I don't want to go and try to fish. Then I have an excuse. People are like, oh, I didn't went with Stan. I didn't catch shit. I'm like, ah, oh, but dude, I was, just, I, I was doing <laughs> I was filming. filming. It's all good, bro. I wasn't trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wasn't even trying. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I could have right. caught some stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I didn't want to. Oh, I had to operate the drone. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that's yep. what I want to do. Well, Stan, listen, man, we really appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, thanks for coming in. I Heck mean, yeah, man. Yeah, thanks for awesome. having me. It's awesome. And, and anytime, anytime, anytime and hanging And guys. let me tell you yeah. something, man. Everything you've done, and I've been following you for a while now. I mean, you're probably one of the most well-rounded anglers, and I'd say hunter angler in general that I've ever met. So I've never mean, met a hunter, so that's I've that's met hunters true. in New Jersey. The fishing party meant, though. My yeah. father was a hunter, sir, for okay. deer. He was hunting tail. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He's going to watch this. That's why tail. 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 So you know. <laughs> On that tail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fred. Uh, he's going to hey, see Rick. this, you know. <laughs> hey, Rick, I was just kidding. How you no, doing? I wasn't. No, you know, he was slaying it. Back there. <laughs> he's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Deep down, so. Well, yeah. In other words, um, this is where Joe just lays it on thick, and yeah. no, hey, continue. listen, I really appreciate. It. He's a good guy. I mean, I no, tried to man. get him on for a while, so it's been. Awesome. Well, we have a space now, so it's like before we yeah. could only have two people, and now we can have three. So yeah, it's we actually wanna... perfect timing. I've had a lot going on with the move. You know, moving up to Stewart and also no. Palm City. Yeah, yeah. You moving the boat? Or are you keeping? No, it the boat will still be here. Uh, my my old mate slash second captain Anthony. Uh, is running the boat now, mm-hmm. and I'm actually going to be down running weekends, running all the time too. So still doing it, yeah, 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 yeah. Doing more private work stuff too, and mm-hmm. I'm actually starting. Uh, I've been selling sea witches and tackle for a while, but I'm going to kind of blow that up a little more up there because I have more cool. time to do it. And, nice, yeah. And take care of my kids a little more and have more fun more with time. them. Speaking yeah. of kids, any advice you can give me? Because I got a little one coming up. I mean, man, it's There's nothing you can tell anyone. <laughs> There, there's there's advice. Some... There's advice all over the place for it. You know, just <laughs> nothing pre- prepares you, dude. Your nothing? first kid Seriously? coming? Yeah, nothing nice. prepares. Yeah, you. little girl. Little uh, girl. She'll be here in early April. Oh, see, I got all kinds of advice, but I don't have a little girl yet. So, got. Mm. Uh, I actually have two boys. Braden, which is almost six, will be six January twenty first. Uh, and then wow. Shane. That's my son's birthday, oh, January twenty first. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you guys are in the same club. I told you, we, <laughs> dude, we hunt, we have kids on the same day, whatever, yeah. dog. But anyways, oh, wow. my uh, my youngest Shane right now is three and a half, and then actually I have another little boy on the way. So oh, congrats, yeah, it's man! Just getting out it's there Shane's big, birthday, so. when's, when's August he do? 15th. April like twenty. Dude, 21st, we might be in the same right? hospital really? together, bro. Oh, That'd be yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. Is is cool. Shane, is the second one's birthday August the fifteenth? No, that would be weird. May 9th. Oh. He's trying to find ways to show that you guys are like actually brothers. Yeah, we're getting, close. Oh, what are you we're getting closer about? over yeah. here. Look at this, man. We go way back here. We're gonna be. Uh, see that? Gonna take me uh, for a date later. See, Fred's not my friend anymore. He's, Dinner and a movie. He's, he's, he's kind of threw your, me away. What's I, your name, dude? <laughs> God, you're so. Weird. What do you always tell me? You're such a bad friend. <laughs> he's the worst friend I know. <laughs> well, how am I the worst friend? What are you talking uh, you about? Know. We won't go into it on the air. But anyway, yeah. So, dude. Appreciate you coming in. We're gonna no we're gonna sign off because I don't, I don't want it to cut off before we say bye. Yeah. No. So, okay. Well, yeah, listen, so, man. We really appreciate it. And anytime. Uh, yeah, man. We'd love to have you back on. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. For anytime. Sure. We'll get in. Get some more good info in there. You know. Yeah. More fishing. 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 And we are going boar hunting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Let's think that'll be awesome. And with the selfish smackdown coming up. I'm sure you're working or whatnot, but if you can make an appearance, I think it'd be awesome. At least at the kickoff party at Brews Room when or is something. Um, I'll text you the dates. It's, it's January uh, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Okay. And uh, the 11th will be the kickoff at Brews Room. Awesome. So uh, I'm sure a lot of these guys would love to meet you and we do a meet greet or something and give these guys some more tips on yeah, man. catching Anything. these selfish. So. I'll we'll give you the see goods. You there. We'll yeah, we'll see you give there. You the goods. Awesome. That's right, Don't man. talk about the stink hole anymore, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's with you in the stink hole? It's great fishing. He's still thinking about it. Yeah, yeah he's, you can't he's, tell anybody else about it. Those are Tennessee do you think people. like you have like a spot or something? Because well, I mean, you don't catch you... fish. Hey, bro. Like I don't understand your logic. Like, what do you? I don't it's... want the I don't want the Tennessee folks coming in and catching stink hole fish. And that's actually the guys from uh, what somebody from out of state won yeah. last year. Yeah, so, we right? had a guy from mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. That's cool, man. And a guy from uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh coming winning the sailfish. Is that series. crazy, man? What? It's Is awesome. that awesome? It's and then we had another awesome. guy in part one from uh, Jacksonville. Nice. So it was. Uh, cool. We always get out of towners that do really well. So it's awesome. 
Because it gives everybody a chance, you know, and exactly. everybody has fun and keeps it going. Exactly. That's so. why it got big in Jamie's tournaments, you know, a sure. bunch of boats were doing so good most of the time. And <laughs> then Jamie kind of rerouted things a little bit. And yeah. Just everybody's fishing them and loves them. And, you know, there's all kinds of ways to win money and have a good time. And that's the thing. I feel like with tournaments, it's always evolving, mm. right. you know, and, and right. Jamie made a good point. You know, I asked him, what was your plan in the beginning? He said, I had no plan. You know, it just kind of spiraled into what Roll it is today with the punches. exactly it's so i like life yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i like that that's your kid that's advice cool. dude I like just that. it's like life it's just all you don't can do kill, with the just kid. don't kill like the kid you don't think you're ready yeah really you're ready yeah you, you, you know what i'm a little nervous times. i can't change diapers i'll pass out uh just it's so look, easy no it's no you don't understand i, I i'm it, a pass nasty i'm a passer outer i can't see blood or buff that's what i used to do the extreme who rack double it up Get a carbon filter in there, dude. Yes. yes. You're good, bro. It's like a little uh Yeah, or you could just shield. take the sand out of your vagina and man up and change your baby's <laughs> diaper like a normal person. Or put two of them on there. Yeah. Use it for a poop shield, too. Yeah, you know? this is going to be bad. Christ. With the boys, I got peed on a few times, but I really? don't think oh, I have yeah, that problem dude, with I had the girl. That. Cooper peed on me once. Oh, really? Yeah. But the girl it's won't great. do that. No, I don't they think so. They got some projectile, bro. Oh. Over your shoulder, dude. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Boys, right? They get little boners and they're so little. Like, All the time, yeah. As a baby, baby, baby. Like this big of a baby. Little boner. Really? It's so weird. I didn't well, think I mean, that happened. Like, I don't remember my first boner. So you really noticed that, huh? I was probably like 18 or 19 years old. <laughs> that I remember. It's first. <laughs> yeah. Fred, oh, the things yeah. you notice, buddy, this is why we love you. What are you doing? I'm all awesome tangled times. up in wires awesome right now. Times. And I got one more gift for you. Uh, oh, this boy. is from our sponsor, O'Meals. And oh, you can nice. give it a try on your boat. Uh, here. here. There we go. We got... We got... Ooh, I'm all yeah. tangled in wires here. We got an O'Meals, and this one is the vegetable stew. So Ooh. it's nice and beefy. Yeah. That's hunting meals, And then we boy. got the... Uh, the very good for hunting. And then we got the chicken one, too. Where was that? <laughs> That's my eye. You got me right in the. Did I get you in the eye again? Snot locker. So man. Uh, yeah, man. They taste as good as they look. Yeah, give they're those, good. Give good. those like, a try. Yeah, sure. They're awesome. Hunting packs, man. Camping. There you hunting. go for hunting. It'd be perfect. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, thank you really O'Meals. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. O'Meals. So, I'm gonna eat your stuff. That's right. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, guys. We love you. We'll see you on the water later, guys. See you soon.